Something is at a rye in our comprehension of the universe. Cosmology is, by all accounts, heading for a standoff on one of its most essential inquiries. How fast is the universe growing? For more than a decade, two sorts of estimations have been in conflict. Perceptions of the current universe ordinarily track down the rate of development, called the Hubble Consistent, to be around 9% quicker than expectations based on early universe information. Scientists trusted that the James Webb, the most high-level telescope at any point constructed, would assist with settling the inquiry. However, it has, up to this point, failed to emerge. Rather, the preeminent observatory has solidified the error with amazingly exact new perceptions that take steps to overturn the standard model of cosmology. The new physical science expected to alter or try and supplant the 40-year-old hypothesis is currently a subject of debate. An astonishing and fascinating plausibility is that there's something we try not to comprehend about the universe. Join us as we dive deep into new ultra-deep pictures from James Webb, recently affirmed there is something truly amiss with how we might interpret the universe. Our universe started with a bang. The Big Bang. Energy, mass, and space streaked into presence all within a short-lived moment. Then, the young universe was formed, an expanding roiling plasma stock of matter and antimatter particles that popped into reality just to destroy each other upon contact. Left to their own devices, the matter and antimatter within this plasma ought to have consumed each other completely. However, scientists trust that some unknown lopsidedness enabled more matter than antimatter to be produced, saving the universe from immediate implosion. Gravity compacted the plasma, pockets pressing and heating the matter so that sound waves, traveling just over around 50% of the speed of light, called baryon acoustic motions, undulated across their surface. In the meantime, the high energy density of the early universe's compacted contents expanded spacetime, pulling a small part of this mass safely from the seer. As the universe expanded like a bubble, the standard story goes normal matter, which interacts with light, coagulated around clusters of invisible dark matter to make the first galaxies connected together by a vast cosmic web. At first, as the universe's contents spread out, its energy density, and thus its expansion rate, decreased. However, then, approximately 5 billion years ago, galaxies began to retreat once more at a consistently faster rate. The reason was another invisible and mysterious element known as dark energy. The simplest and most popular explanation for dark energy is that it is a cosmological constant, an inflationary energy that is the same everywhere and at every moment, woven into the expanding fabric of spacetime. Einstein named it lambda in his theory of general relativity. As our universe evolved, its overall matter density dropped, while the dark energy density remained the same, increasingly making the latter the major contributor to its overall expansion. Added together, the energy densities of standard matter, dark matter, dark energy, and energy from light set forth the upper speed line of the universe's expansion. They are also key ingredients in the lambda cold dark matter or lambda CDM model of cosmology which maps the evolution of the universe and predicts its end. With matter eventually spread so far, it encounters a power death called the Big Freeze. Many of the model's predictions have been shown to be highly accurate. But here's where the problems start. Despite much looking, astronomers do not know what dark matter or dark energy are. As Ofer Lahav, a professor of cosmology at University College London who is involved in galaxy studies of dark energy, said, most people agree that the universe's current composition is 5% ordinary nuclear matter, 25% cold dark matter, and 70% dark energy. The embarrassing truth is we don't understand the last two of them. But an even greater threat to the Lambda CDM model has appeared. Depending on what method astrophysicists use, the universe appears to be expanding at different rates, a discrepancy known as the Hubble tension. Techniques that peer into the early universe show it expanding significantly faster than Lambda CDM predicts. Those methods have been scrutinized and confirmed by countless observations. So, as Nobel Prize winning astrophysicist Adam Rees, who led the team that made the new James Webb measurement, said, The only reason that I can understand at this point for them to differ is that the model that we have between them is perhaps missing something. Measuring the universe's expansion takes a bit more than a radar gun. The main method to measure this expansion looks at the so-called cosmic microwave background or CMB, 
a remnant of the universe's first light produced just 380,000 years after the Big Bang. The imprint should be visible across the entire sky, and it was planned to find a Hubble constant with less than 1% uncertainty by the European Space Agency's Planck satellite between 2009 and 2013. In this cosmological image, the universe is as a rule uniform but hotter and colder patches, where matter is more or less dense, reveal where baryon acoustic motions made it bunch as the universe exploded outward. This soap bubble structure expanded into the cosmic web, a network of tangled strands along whose intersections galaxies would be born. By studying these swells with the Planck satellite, cosmologists inferred the amounts of standard matter and dark matter and a value for the cosmological constant or dark energy. Plugging these into the standard model spat out a Hubble constant of about 67 kilometers per second per megaparsec. We should pause on this number for a second. If a world is a distance of one megaparsec away from us, that would mean it will recede from us and us from it at 67 kilometers per second. At 20 megaparsecs, this recession grows to 1,340 kilometers per second and keeps on growing dramatically from there. If a galaxy is any further than 4,175 megaparsecs away, it will recede from us quicker than the speed of light. A second method to find this expansion rate uses pulsating stars called Cepheid variables. Passing stars with helium gas outer layers that expand and contract as they absorb and emit the star's radiation, making them periodically flash like distant signal lights. In 1912, astronomer Henrietta Swan Leavitt found that the brighter a Cepheid variable was, the slower it would flash, enabling cosmologists to measure a star's absolute brightness and thereby measure its distance. It was a milestone discovery that turned Cepheids into abundant standard candles to measure the universe's large scale. By hanging observations of pulsating Cepheids together, cosmologists can build cosmic distance ladders, with each rung taking them a step back into the past. It's one of the most reliable means that astronomers have today for measuring distances. To build a distance ladder, Astronomers construct the first rung by picking nearby Cepheids and cross-checking their distance based on pulsating light to that found by math. The next rungs are added using Cepheid readings alone. Then, astronomers look at the distances of the stars and supernovae on each rung and examine how much their light has been redshifted to longer, redder frequencies as the universe expands. This gives an accurate measurement of the Hubble constant. In 2019, the method was used by Rees and his colleagues who trained the Hubble Space Telescope on one of the Milky Way's closest neighbors, the Large Magellanic Cloud. Their result was sensitive. An immensely high growth rate of 74 kilometers per second per megaparsec compared to the Planck measurement. However, Hubble, lacking fundamental accuracy for the crowded regions of space, the team was focusing on causing some distant Cepheids to blur into adjacent stars, Disagreeing cosmologists had some room left to argue that the result, however stunning, might have come from a measurement error. So when James Webb launched in December 2021, it was poised to either resolve the discrepancy or cement it. At 6.5 meters, Webb's mirror is just over twice the size of Hubble's, which is just 2.4 meters wide. Not only can James Webb detect objects 10 times fainter than Hubble can, but it is also much more sensitive in the infrared range enabling it to see in a broader range of frequencies. By comparing stars measured by James Webb in the Galaxy NGC 4258 with type IIA supernovae, another standard candle since they all burst at the same absolute luminosity in distant galaxies, Reese and his colleagues arrived at an almost identical result, 73 kilometers per second per megaparsec. Other measurements, including one made by Fredman with the Hubble Space Telescope on the fast brightening of the brightest tip of the branch red giant stars and another with light bent by the gravity of massive galaxies, returned with specific results of 69.6 and 66.6 kilometers per second per megaparsec. A separate result using the bending of light also gave a value of 73 kilometers per second per megaparsec. Cosmologists were left reeling. According to Ryan Key, a cosmologist at the University of California Merced who has been working to figure out the Hubble tension. The CMB temperature is measured at the level of 1% accuracy, and the Cepheid distance ladder estimation is approaching 1%. So a difference of 7 kilometers per second, even though it's not large, is very unlikely to be a random chance. There is something distinct to figure out. The new result leaves the answer wide open, dividing cosmologists into camps pursuing vastly different solutions. Following the Hubble Space Telescope result, 
an official attempt to resolve the issue at a 2019 conference at the Kavli Institute for Theoretical Physics in California only caused more frustration. As the late Vera Rubin, who found evidence for dark matter, said at the time, no one wanted to give up their toy. Every one of the people involved believed so strongly in their own results and so strongly in the way that their observations and their measurements were done correctly, it just left people wanting to figure out how do I figure this out. In February 2023, with James Webb and another independent Hubble distance ladder result confirming the Hubble tension, cosmologists are left with three potential explanations. Measurement errors, new physics, or some combination of the two. Most of the data supports new physics. The simplest and most popular theory is that dark energy acts differently today than it did in the early universe. If dark energy was strong at one time and then faded away, it would make the universe look smaller when we look back to the early universe, making the expansion rate appear faster. There are other explanations, such as the possibility that there are two types of dark energy or that dark matter interacts with light. But these explanations present complications that cosmologists are wary of. Without further data, Dark energy and dark matter aren't the only secrets James Webb is helping to solve. When it launched, it was tasked with looking further back in time than any telescope before it. James Webb's revolutionary new imaging technology enabled it to see galaxies formed just 300 million years after the Big Bang. However, while examining the universe's origins, cosmologists noticed that as these early galaxies are much more massive and evolved than the standard model predicts, early galaxies should have been full of young hot stars forming at a very fast rate. But James Webb showed many of them were overflowing with heavy elements from earlier generations of stars and actively growing bulging centers of supermassive black holes. Let's break down this fascinating topic further. 1. The Fundamentals of Cosmology, the Big Bang, and Early Universe The universe began around 13.8 billion years ago in a hot, dense state. Soon after the Big Bang, it expanded rapidly, leading to the universe we observe today. 2. Measuring the expansion rate. Early universe measurements using the Cosmic Microwave Background, CMB, provides one method for measuring the universe's expansion rate. Current universe measurements observing pulsating stars, Cepheid variables, and type IIA supernovae offer another method, yielding a higher growth rate than expected by early universe measurements, the Hubble tension. This discrepancy between early and current universe measurements suggests potential errors or the need for new physics. 3. James Webb Space Telescope Capabilities With unparalleled precision and sensitivity, James Webb confirms the higher growth rate seen with current universe measurements, confirming inconsistencies. James Webb's findings validate existing inconsistencies and prompt a re-evaluation of cosmological models for potential explanations. Measurement errors new physics, or some combination of the two. For implications for cosmology. Threat to the standard model. The persistence of the Hubble tension suggests weaknesses in the Lambda-CDM model, prompting the need for revisions. Need for new theories. Resolving the tension requires advancements in how we interpret cosmology, which relies on future observations and theoretical developments. Five early galaxies and discoveries. Unexpected characteristics. James Webb's observations reveal early galaxies with surprising properties, challenging existing models of galaxy evolution. In conclusion, James Webb's precise data intensifies debates in cosmology, requiring further investigation and possibly redefining how we interpret the universe. Exploring these topics opens new frontiers in astronomy, inviting deeper insights into the nature and evolution of the universe.